Hi, Mrs. Fields kindergarten class. I'm Frank Marzullo. I'm the uh, local weatherman. You might see me on your TV in the morning uh, with mom and dad over at Fox 19 with that seven day forecast. But I'm also Leo Marzullo's dad. Is everybody? I know everybody's new. You met Leo. Say hi, Leo. Now Leo say hi, friends. OK, there you go. Today I'm your mystery reader and we're going to read the book Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I hope you enjoy it. Are you ready? Let's do it. And you can watch on my big monitor here because we'll put some of the pictures up because I know it's always important when Leo and I read at home. We always like to see the pictures. OK, here we go. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs uh, written by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I, we were betting on how many pancakes we each could eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. Now, seconds later, something flew through the air. It headed toward the kitchen ceiling and landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed. Even Grandpa breakfast continued quiet, uneventfully, and all the other pancakes landed in the pan and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. Now here's where the story gets really good, kids. Listen up. That night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told, told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever tell. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains across three hot desert deserts and one smaller ocean. There lay the tiny town of chew and swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them. A schoolhouse about 300 people and some assorted cats and dogs. Now take a look here, but there were no food stores in that town of chew and swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. Now the people could watch the weather report right on their local television in the morning, and they would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. Can you believe it? When the townspeople went outside, they carried plates, cups, glasses, forks and spoons and napkins. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in the refrigerators in case they got hungry between the meals. Now the menu varied by the time they woke up in the morning. Breakfast was coming down after a brief shower, maybe of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side eggs moved in, followed by a piece of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. Now for lunchtime, one day Frankfurters were already in their rolls. They blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by gradual clearing with this wonderful jello setting in the West. Who loves jello? It's always good. Hey, the sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for a sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and they fed all the dogs and cats too. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower 
Gardens. Now take a look at the headline here on the Chew and Swallow Digest. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. Yeah, the spaghetti tied up town. One day there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese. Mm. The next day, only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. No thank you. Another day, there was a pea soup fog, and no one could see where they were going. And they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in that fog. Well, the food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, a hurricane of bread and rolls rolled in. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds, some without. There was white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than they had ever seen before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged. The sanitation department beside itself. The mess took workers four days to clean up. To help the people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards, so the birds picked at it a bit, but it just stayed there. It got staler and staler. Check a look at this. Look at that. Who likes pancakes? Well, this pancake was so big, after a storm of pancakes one morning, a downpour of maple syrup nearly flooded the town, and guess what? The huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of its weight, so they had to close School. Imagine a giant pancake on Marymount Elementary. Have to eat your way out. Lunch one day brought 15 inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick and the day ended with a stomach ache. But then it got worse. An awful salt and pepper wind was followed by an even worse tomato tornado. Look at it there. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes, the town was a mess. There were seeds and pulp everywhere. Now, we all like a good sprinkled donut, but what about one chasing you down the street? The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. They couldn't go outside anymore. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up, and there was no more school for the children. Look at all that macaroni and cheese falling from the sky. So a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. Now, the people glued together those giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style with peanut butter, and they took the absolute necessities with them. And they set sail on their bread rafts for a new land. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town, which welcomed them. The bread had held up surprisingly well, so they built temporary houses for themselves. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying food at the supermarket. They found it odd that the food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger ever again. And nobody dared to go back to that town called Chew and Swallow to find out whatever happened to it. They were too afraid. Well, Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. Now, listen to this as we wrap it up, kids. The next morning, they woke up to see snow falling outside their window. They ran downstairs for breakfast. They ate it a little faster than usual so they could go sledding with Grandpa. Well... It's funny, but even as they were sliding down the hill, they thought they saw a giant pat of butter right there on top of what they could smell almost was mashed potatoes. The end. That's the book, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Maybe you guys can talk it over with Mrs. Fields a little bit uh, and discuss it. Maybe you can have meatballs tonight. Anybody ever, there's a movie on this too that was out a few years ago. Maybe you can watch it this weekend with your family. Well, it was nice to talk with everybody. And uh, Leo, I'll see you at home and have a good rest of the day, everybody.